Moving on. This is at Infowars.com from Jurian Masson. Senator suggested false flag attack to Kennedy two years prior to Northwood's proposal. And this is uh, California Democratic Senator George Smathers proposed an Operation Northwood style false flag attack on Gitmo to then Massachusetts Senator Kennedy, The Guardian reports. And uh, it goes down here to a quote. I did talk to him about a plan of having a false flag attack on Guantanamo Bay, which would give us an excuse to actually foment a fight, which would then give us an excuse to go in and do the job. He asked me to write him something about it, and I think I did. And uh, part of, here's a little outline of, of what they came up with. Start rumors using clandestine radio. Have land-friendly Cubans in uniform over the fence to stage attack on the base. Capture Cuban-friendly saboteurs inside the base. Start riots near the main base, friendly Cubans. Blow up ammunition inside the base to start fires. Burn aircraft on the air base, that's sabotage. Lob mortar shells from outside of the base into base, some damaged installations. Capture assault teams approaching from the CR vicinity of Guantanamo City. Capture a militia group which storms the base. Sabotage ships in the harbor with large fires or sink ship near the harbor entrance and conduct funerals for mock victims. And this is the playbook we've seen countless areas and just recently in uh, North Africa showing some of those fake funerals where the guy starts laughing after uh, he's supposedly being buried. And what does this tell you? It tells you that false flag attack is part of the modus operandi of the United States government. And it's on all branches. It just happens to be there's certain peoples who conduct into it. And those rogue groups are out there. And they do do things like this. It's not out of the ordinary. In fact, it is par for the course. So remember that next time there's another stage shooting. Moving on to another stage event, which I railed upon last week. And I'm going to continue railing on it until the Mail Online stops posting that picture. Exclusive. Out of the mail online, Obama canceled mission to kill bin Laden three times after getting cold feet until Hillary stepped in. Claims explosive new book. And the new book is titled Leading from Behind, which you can take what you will from that. It's got a lot of different connotations to it, especially uh, there's rumors out there of, you know, our president crossing the fence several times or playing on both sides of the team. Anyway, Barack Obama canceled three operations to kill Osama bin Laden before finally going ahead with the mission at the assistance of Hillary Clinton, according to the new book. The explosive allegations contained an, an expose by journalist Richard Mintier, who argued that the White House's craftily, craft, carefully crafted narrative of Obama as a decisive leader who dispatched the al-Qaeda leader despite the doubts of advisors is a myth. And then Politico came out with another piece. We're going to go to the overhead camera on this. White House fabrication that Obama called off bin Laden raid. And so they're basically disputing these facts. So this is what you get when nobody's telling the truth. You get this muddying of waters. And then let's go back to the bin Laden raid a little bit. Special Ops Commander says book on SEAL raid that killed bin Laden is a lie. So this was uh, last year. Uh, well, this is in November of last year. You had all these different special ops guys coming out saying their version of the tale was right, and then people were disputing that. And so you also had what the stage White House photo, which I'm going to go to, which they keep including in this Mail Online article right here. Stage photo, they were not watching the raid at the time because Panetta came out and said they had 20 minutes of footage where they could not see any video, or, or tw a 20 minute time span where they cannot see any video. But the Mail Online keeps going to this. Uh, photo is here claiming it's authentic, where you don't even have Obama looking in the same location as everybody else. There's that photo. Hillary Clinton's got her hand over her mouth. Everybody's looking serious. You got another general who looks like he's playing solitaire over there, not really paying attention. And so what does all this say? They're going to keep changing little bits of the story just to keep putting it out there like it's a real event. And they're just going to keep tweaking the narrative till you know, 10 years from now, nobody's going to know what really happened. All that we know is that Bin Laden's dead, yet they have no evidence that he's dead. They have no DNA evidence. They have no photographic evidence. There's no log from the boat that he was supposedly thrown off of with the burial at sea. That's not even Muslim tradition, even though the U.S. claimed it was. So it's just a quagmire story that's just going to keep, it's actually funny watching them keep throwing out different things and writing books about it to try to sell this fake narrative. Moving on to more fake narratives. 
FOIA documents, DHS monitored opposition to see something, say something program. And there she is. There's Janet Dungbeetle checking out InfoWars. Hundreds of pages of documents released under the Freedom of Information Act reveal that Department of Homeland Security monitored political opposition to the See Something, Say Something campaign, as well as tracking InfoWars stories and user comments on a myriad of other issues while categorizing the web website as right-wing terrorism. Wow. The documents contain email communications as well as intelligence reports that circle between different offices of the Department of Homeland Security as well as the Office of Intelligence and Analysis. And in most cases, the, the identities of individuals both sending and receiving messages have been redacted. The report notes how Infowars.com launched a campaign in opposition to the DHS program, which encourages citizens to report suspicious activity and basically become spies for the state to the authorities, including uh, via television screens at Walmart, which play the message from DHS chief Janet Dungbeetle Napolitano. We, and we have a couple close-ups here. One is from the Antrac intelligence team, which says, detect deter defend and we can bring that up that's one of my graphics there and basically it details the v for vendetta campaign there it is right there see something say something and there's actual screenshots from the site infowars.com you are the resistance and uh that's pretty funny and then also they talk about um from and this is from a um a screenshot with the front page report entitled right wing terrorism then it goes to the Hardin, Montana story that we covered back in 2009, which also ended up being part of Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA, where you had this guy who was a convicted felon. He had many aliases. He was basically trying to go into Hardin, Montana, start a Hardin police force, and run around in his specially uh, decaled, outfitted cars, claiming he was you know, the law of the land and basically housed people in this prison that they weren't even using. So they use that, and it says conspiracy theorists believe this is a new location of a FEMA camp. Well, Alex Jones, Aaron Dykes, and Rob Jacobson went on location to Hardin, Montana. They interviewed the spokesperson who refused to talk about this uh, Michael, I, I forget his last name uh, right off the top of my head, but um, he was out there basically putting these poli police decals that said Hardin Police Force on his cars. They were going around pretending they were the police force of the area, even though Hardin did not have a police department. And what the, what were they going to do? They were going to base out of that that uh, prison base or that prison, and um, and then use it to basically just harass the local citizens. This is something we see other security guards my, are, are coming up with this motif of we're going to act like we're the cops, we're going to dress like the cops, we're going to outfit our cars just like the cops, and people won't know the difference, and they'll just bow to anyone in uniform. So there's that story, and you can check it out. It's from Paul Joseph Watson, the title, FOIA Documents, DHS Monitored Opposition to See Something, Say Something Program. Now moving on back to Colorado, Aurora Witness, Alarm Announced Murder in the Theater. And this is a really interesting video that came out of the DetroitPress.com. And basically, it has a witness who was there. Her name was uh, Selena Jordan. She was in a neighboring theater while all this was going on. People in her theater got shot. And then she talks about this mysterious alarm she heard. So let's go to that video now. So like five minutes after the guy comes running in and tells them that they're shooting outside, you hear the alarm go off. They, it said murder in the theater. Like it's just going off murder in the theater, murder in the theater. It's crazy that they got an alarm saying that there was a murder in the theater, you know? <laughs> so. so there you go. More stories coming out of that, which lead me to believe that they knew this was going to happen. Why else would you have murder in theater playing over a loudspeaker? That is really creepy and really suspicious. And we came out basically from day one and said this was a false flag attack. I went on to coast to coast for about three hours a few weeks ago. And I mean, it was maybe two days old that this incident had happened. And we were talking about it in the you know as it was a false flag attack and i personally believe that it was because if you look at all the information and all the um the different you know the second gas mask being found uh james holmes like giving up without a struggle and then telling police he's got his apartment booby trapped him being have, in his darpa connections his father's connections i mean it goes all over the place so we call it first and we stand by that story until we're proven otherwise